Hi everyone, I'm Max McKenna. We're uh, here in the Harold Washington Library in downtown Chicago. Um, I'm joined by David, Matt, Shafali, and Bob, myself here. We're going to be doing a close reading of Still Life Portrait by Pierre Reverdy, translated by Kenneth Rex Roth. <clears throat> Still life portrait. Cigarette papers, date book, and tobacco pouch. Life ought to be like painting. Still. And literature? A hairless head. Eyes straight. Comma. A flat nose. A plane on the forehead. My portrait. My heart beats. It's an alarm clock. In the mirror at full length, my head smokes. That's still life portrait. <clears throat> um, any first impressions on this? You know, I was just reading something by Louise Gluck, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in which she talks about art, some art becoming artifact and some art not becoming artifact. The difference between painting and, uh, and literature. But it seems like here, it's almost like he, the author is painting a painting. He's making an artifact. He, he wants to, um, he wants you to picture all these various objects mm -hmm. in, the, in the still life portrait that he's painting here. And that, uh, this, it seems to me he's saying, approach this poem as if you were to approach a painting with all these objects in it and let that poem affect you the same way the painting would if you're looking at a painting with mm -hmm. cigarette papers and, uh, and uh, other things <coughs> lying around. Mm -hmm. That's very nicely said. I agree with that. Uh, I, I really love the way that the first line and the last line uh, encompass the poem. He's talking mm -hmm. about the cigarette papers mm -hmm. and then it's headed smoke at yeah. the end. And it really is such a nice uh, top to bottom portrait. Yeah, that you could sit no, that's, that's really good. <laughs> There's, there's also something very so distinct with the first line as well, just the way, you know, he names three things, cigarette papers, date book, and tobacco pouch, but there are no commas. Mm -hmm. And so... It could be the fourth thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, sure. But the date book especially is kind of out of place with, between the first and the last lines. You have the cigarette papers and the tobacco pouch, so you're starting to think about the date book, what kind of a relation does that have to the other things that he's kind of, yeah. sort of listing. And I, th I think that carries on just as he starts to, he's refusing to separate out the, what the artist does or what the writer does with, 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 from the scene and the experience that he's trying to describe. Mm -hmm. what, um, is, what is a date book? A date book? Yeah. Is uh, it just a, it's like your, your, your agenda in your own calendar. Oh, yeah, um, calendar. I imagine a small calendar, leather bound. Um, <coughs> With uh, criticism of his meetings and pocket meetings. secretary of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that. You said the old days. Uh, I thought it was interesting that there was like no punctuation. So yeah. like I found myself like going in and like adding like colons and trying to see like what is being referred to what. Like whereas it ought to be like a painting says life ought to be like a painting, um, and like a literature should be like a hairless head. So I was trying to go back mm -hmm. and um, trying to see like which. What are those descriptors referring to? Mm -hmm. But then it was odd that he put saying like comma there, like so he adds the word. Um, <laughs> when it would be great if he had like put it in, um, <laughs> so we can like follow it along. But um, I do like like the some of like the art kind of references. So like a flat nose, a plane, like that made me think of like like cubism, like mm -hmm. being like or like. Um, like there's a the Picasso painting where, um, like the women that in the painting, they're all like flat, so they're yeah. not like they're not they're not like representational. They're not three D. They're um, on a plane. Um, and then also like the one where it's in the mirror on full length. Mm -hmm. um, that reminds me also of like I think it's a work by like Renee like Magritte where it's like he takes the human body but he like chops it up. So like mm -hmm. one part's the head, one part's like 
the torso and like, um, but it's like, it's folding. Sure. So it's like he's taking it, he's like cutting it up, but then he's putting it all back together so it is like mm -hmm. that full person. So uh, I thought it was a lot of interesting kind of nods and that's that's you know, that's good to follow the, the cubistic um, aspect of this poem I think is very important. Uh, I think we see this in some other modernist poems that, that try to use painting techniques, specifically cubism, um, to and recreate those. Um, I think yeah, we have we have this this breaking down of the body and then kind of um, reconstitutes itself at the end in that, that full length. But not quite. Um, my head smokes. Yeah, thanks for pointing to that. Matt, I love that image. It's, it's very, for me, that's like a classic Magritte. I can just imagine. Yeah. You, know, you gave it to Magritte, so yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think there was, like, there was an exhibition on yeah. him like, yeah. last year. There's a plain painting in the Art Institute, I think it's, it, mm -hmm. it's a Picasso, called uh, the Smoking Man, a man with a man with pipe, where it's, it, it, you know, you have the pipe here and the head here, and you have all these different objects, which would be in a, a regular painting of a man with a pipe. Oh, but they're, they're all yeah. separated. That's, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, yeah, that's very cubistic. Um, um, there seems to be also a, a pushing against the idea that you can portray someone as a still life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. with that, my heart beats. Yeah. It's my portrait. Very good. My heart beats. I am living. I am not some, something on a, a, a plane, something you can sure. describe in words. My heart beats. It's an alarm clock. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a pushing against that uh, that still life as well. I would say there's a there's a bit of a pushing and a pulling really, mm -hmm. because the for every it, there's there's a constant tension, and I think that's that's um, encapsulated in the title still life portrait right <laughs> myself as still life. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody can anybody say anything about what still life typically look like or what they are? Usually fruits, yeah. vegetables, yeah. foods, mm -hmm. objects, usually domestic. Are they are they ever people? No. Yeah. Still life is almost a, it's, I think it's defined by the fact that it's not people, it's not portraiture. It's always objects. It's always as you said, domestic objects. Mm -hmm. um, and then fruits. Oh, the fruit. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then typically oh. the goal in, in like still life would be to make it like as like representational as you can. Yeah. And I think that he's doing like basically the exact opposite, um, where you're not taking like the literal kind of meaning, um, you are kind of turning that off the head. I just, um, I, I'm gonna go back to, to, to just the not saying a moment ago, how, how does, because that moment, I think you're right, my heart beats is something living and dynamic that you can't capture in the surface of the painting. How does that fit? With that claim, just in the, if you can read it all together, life ought to be like a painting. Well, I don't know that I'd read it, life ought to be like painting. Yeah. I, I view this as a list poem, and each line should be, we should take each line as it is, not as an example, I'm not reading okay. it as an example line in any way. So, um, so what, what do you do with the life ought to be like a painting? Then? What mm -hmm. do you do? And then they apply connection of kind of literature. You want to be like painting mm -hmm. kind of literature. Life still, yeah. Uh, I, I would tend to agree that it is a list, it's very much a list poem, except in that moment I really think it invites you, and the, the absence of punctuation in particular really invites you to. to work with those enjambments. Um, I think there's, before you get to a hairless head, there's a few different ways that you can read that. So you start with that list of objects that we had, right? And then it goes right to life. Ought to be like painting, still, and literature. Like, there, there's so many ways it can be. Life, so you can read it like, you just read it like life, that's one thing. Ought to be like painting, that's another thing. A lot of ways in it itself. But it would be life ought to be like painting, it could be colon still, right? That life ought to be still. Uh, or it could be 
life ought to be like painting still. Period. Like it should, you know, life life should still be like painting. <laughs> um, like like I, I I wish life was like painting again. Um, or I mean, life ought to be like painting still and literature. Mm -hmm. Life ought to be like both of these things. Mm -hmm. Or it could be the, as the, when I when I read that the the I, I read it in such a way that literature was like Harold's head. Right? <laughs> that, that was the part because it, that's also invited too. I think life ought to be like painting. Mm -hmm. Literature ought to be like Harold's head, mm -hmm. um, which is very you know surrealistic <laughs> <laughs> image, right? Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. But that one in particular, I think there's so many ways to. It's very confounding. Um, well, um, I'm, I'm going back to the title now. Uh, sure. We have, it's not a still life portrait. It's a life portrait. Right. A still life still portrait. Life portrait. Yeah. And so... Um, Same kind of thing. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a confusing well, picture of things. Yeah, it's, yeah exa exactly. It's a life still portrait. Life. And, and you know, when we... Towards the end there, when he says, my heart beats, it's an alarm clock, you would think that the, the second line would sound better if, it, if he said, my heart beats, it's like a ticking clock. But he doesn't say it. You know, he's not concentrating on the, the tick, 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 but he's saying, mm -hmm. it, it's an alarm clock. It's something that wakes me up. Mm -hmm. It's something that um, the fact that I'm alive Unlike all these other things that I'm making, you know, that my heart sort of uh, alerts me to the fact that I'm not, I'm not part of this painting, as you pointed out. Still, what right. it, it, it's, um, you know, something incomplete. It, it, it's not alive. It, sure, sure. Yeah. What would it be? So, yeah, working with that. Yeah. The, the alarm clock thing is what. It seems to be almost out of place there. Right, so we had mentioned this sort of persisting liveliness or vitality, but but how or not even to the, the kind of pushing mm -hmm. against the the stillness, mm -hmm. right? Like wanting to, you know, some kind of vitality persisting. However, I think Bob, you're right to point out the alarm clock is an interesting turn there the metaphor. I think it ties back to like the beginning with the cigarette papers, the date book, and the tobacco pouch. It's like these kind of like everyday type objects. So, um, but in a lamp clock, obviously you use it every day. Um, it's kind of like a part of the routine, but then like the way that he's, the way that it's phrased here with the heart beating, it's almost like he's giving life to it. So, uh, I mean, I just thought that was interesting that like, again, like, like going back with like the movement, trying to um, trying to utilize kind of everyday objects in mm -hmm. like a new like a new way. Uh, so I thought that's kind of what he was doing here with the clock. Hmm. Uh, again, I'm not reading any commas or enjambments, so I don't. I'm not reading. My heart beats. It's an alarm clock. It's an alarm clock being my heart. I'm just thinking, I'm viewing them as completely mm -hmm. disparate uh, images all together. And so it's an alarm clock, I think, is going back to the list of objects. The entire portrait, sort of the, the portrait itself, one of the pieces of the portrait, mm -hmm. and not being tied in specifically to the heart. That's how I'm looking at it. Who's the other? Uh, is, is this poet in, in Mod Poe that? Um, it did his his life that day. Thirteen things I did that day. That oh day? yeah. Oh, um, it's sort of a list poem where he talks. I, I got up. I, um, you know, went for a run, smoked pot. New York school. Right. Is, it, is that in my poem? Yeah, it is. It is in my okay, poem. So it's not, I didn't want to bring it up, but sorry. sorry but that's sorry everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember his name. But that's a. It, it sort of it reminds me very much of that yeah. poem sense that um, you do try to, to make all the things connect. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's titled 13 Things I Did That Day. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you can only, depending on how you read the lines, you could right. come up with 12 things right, or 14, exactly. but you really right. couldn't come up with 13. Right. Is that, is that a mod poem? That is a mod poem. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, that's a, I'm pretty sure that's a New York school week. Okay. Yeah. 
So this, this poem just reminds me very much of that. I mean, I, I think the, it may just be worth thinking about the, the genres that are being evoked in the title. Yeah. So the still life already sort of talks a little bit about in the portrait. They, they, they have, I mean, things get just new principles and new terms come into play like, you know, in the 20th century, especially. But, but, but conventionally, there are sort of aspects and elements and principles of composition that come to play within a still life that are not usually the same mm -hmm. when they come to the portrait. So the title itself is suggesting that the, um, uh, a kind of doing away with like formal conventions and sure. boundaries between sort of, you know, different kind of like, um, areas and questions of like representation, how your representation, or how you represent in life. You know, the still life, you know, when you were asking earlier, I was trying to think, like sometimes like animals, right, and sort of, you know, fowl sort of fit into like old still yeah. lives, but they're dead, they're hung up, yeah. and, and yeah. they're just sort of like, you know, exhibition purchase. But the portrait, um, pre-20th century, trying to capture trying to be representative of the person, right. having a lot of like social cu uh, currency, cultural prestige sure. uh, aligned with it. Um, but the 20th century, just like the whole modernist experiment, trying to explode the, the kind of representational possibilities. So something here, thinking of the poem itself as a formal composition about the, the meeting and the problematic of the different yeah. sort of principles coming together, they're trying to make them work in, because it still is the offering a, a poetic form. I don't know where else I can take No, no, but that, that's very good, and I actually, let's run with that for a second. Um, this, uh, your observation about genre and the challenge that's being posed to genre in this poem, um, and about uh, the, the challenges being posed to representation. I really like what you said, um, uh, it got me thinking what you said about uh, portraits prior to the 20th century, not only were they trying to capture the likeness of the person that, they, that was being painted, but also something about their social milieu, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have, you know, if you were wealthy, you would, you would have your portrait painted with your, I don't know, your, uh, jewelry. Yeah, your, your jewelry, your telescope, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I should have had my I left the telescope in my room. Right. <laughs> you have <laughs> the table. You're like brassy telescope. Yeah. I don't know why telescopes are something in your mind. But yeah, that, that's sort of a mark of, of the social setting. And even if you were, say, uh, in bourgeois, if you, if you were middle class and you know not upper class and you're still having your portrait painted, you would still have some sort of objects of, like significant objects, right? So there's something going on here by having, as we were saying earlier, these objects are so mundane and so every day to the point that two of them are literally about like marking the day. Mm -hmm. The alarm clock and the day book. They're, they're literally about the day to day. And you have these completely mundane objects that like A, don't quite fit in a still life, right? Which if you think of if you think of the longer, you know, centuries long tradition of the still life, as you're saying, David, you know, sometimes there's dead fowl or something, or you have, you know, you have some abundance of flowers or grapes or, you know, a, chalice of wine or whatever. I mean, you have all of these, these um, not always luxurious objects, but definitely not, you know, if, if you walked in, if you walked into a room, so, so if, if you walk into the, if you think of like a classic style, I'm trying to think of a still, like, there's a few over at the Art Institute. If you think, try to imagine like this kind of like ornate still, like if you walked into that room, you'd be like, oh, wow, this is, this is a hell of a room. <laughs> you know, it's not, uh, you rarely do a still life of just like a corner or something. It's usually something elaborate. But if you walk into a, this guy, into Reverdy's room, and there's just like his alarm clock and his cigarette papers and his date book, and this, is, this is just this guy's life. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing fancy here. So on one hand, it's, it's a weird set of objects for a still life, and also a strange set of objects for a portrait, right? Like, like if he had his, if he commissioned to have his portrait done, and the only thing he can think to include in that portrait is just the little things he has in his pockets, it's a, uh, it's, it's very strange. It's, it's very much going against 
it, it's it, it's very much going against its conventions, I think, David, as you were as you were saying. Um, so I think I think this really means to to it means to converge this still life in the portrait genres and also like kind of explode both at the same time mm -hmm. by making a a point about um, well I would say it's a point about objects and people I and mean, I'm not going to say that very broadly it's it's he's making a point about people and objects um, that there's there's something going on here. Uh, you know, there's, there's this kind of cubistic rendering of the self, this almost detachment from the self, this objectification of the self, um, right? The, the, the flat nose, the, the, the nose of the comma being the nose, um, and also, but also this, this vitality, the heart beating, the head smoking that's, that wants to go against that. You have both of these things happening at the same time. Um, and it has something to do also with these very, quotidian objects of the, the cigarettes that they book, the alarm clock, that's, I mean, that do, do with that observation what you will. Mm -hmm. It's not concerned also with like traditional, like what you would want to achieve in a portrait, um, which would be, you know, it's the, the love likeness, um, that you catch the light, um, that would be like something of importance, like if you were to look at a singer or sergeant or anything, but this is like not concerned with any of those like traditional, mm -hmm. um, like artistic um, kind of measurements. Instead it's, you know, a nose on the forehead, it's completely distorted. Um, so again, not how you would um, usually measure like a right. good portrait. Um, sure. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, it's the mixture of the two that, that stands out to me. We, we, as you pointed out a couple times, that traditionally a still life is a bowl of fruit on the table or something, mm -hmm. flowers, and, and a, a portrait of life, a portrait of a person is, is, is a bit more grandiose mm -hmm. and, and a bit more uh, uplifting, or at least the person who's getting his portrait painted wants it to be, uh, you know, uplifting yeah. and special. And you're putting those two together, I think. It's a still, it's not a still life, it's a still life portrait. Yeah. It's like putting putting the two yeah. together, and the, if you took a still life and you had humans in it, or you had life, if you took a real life in it, this is what it would be. Sure. Uh, I think, didn't you point that out before, man? I mean, it's, it's, I mean that, that, that putting together those two things uh, is, uh, I, I think, what he's trying to mm -hmm. yeah. to accomplish. Yeah, something something you can't really do in, 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 in a painting, right. which that's, you can't, which you can't, yeah, right. in, in a, you can't, can't make an artifact look like that, but you can, do something like this and make the person's imagination, the reader's mm -hmm. imagination, mm -hmm. create that. And it, it reminds me of that O'Hara poem, with the, or he, visited, he visits his friend the painter, Mike, Why and he's painting, painting Why sardines. Painting. Yeah. And, um, we'll encounter that one too, <laughs> later in New York school. It's true, yeah, there, there are definitely, um, uh, yeah, there's definitely some resemblance there. I mean, just thinking about Um, and something, something interesting to think about when we do encounter O'Hara and we have a little bit of context. I mean, it's very lately O'Hara read this poem in you know, 1956 mm -hmm. or something, right? Uh, I mean, not it's very likely, it's probably a certainty. <laughs> yeah, the um, book in his pocket. Yeah, that book in his pocket. <laughs> There's no way he didn't read this poem. Um, <laughs> unless he skipped it over. <laughs> plus, it was a curator at the Museum of Modern Art, so. You know, this whole idea is, is kind of lingering with him, mm -hmm. even though uh, O'Hara is not a, uh, he's not like a surrealist Dadaist quite in the same way uh, at all. I mean, he has some principles, he takes some ideas of surrealism, like the walking around, I would say, that was a 
Bretonian surrealist idea. Um, but he's, you know, Harry's, uh, you know, it's not, he's not, his head's not smoking. It's like the Nick Green style, like, 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 yeah. um, that line, like, my heart, it just reminds me of, like, Edgar Allan Poe, I guess. Mm -hmm. like, uh, but I guess that everybody is probably inspired by what has come before, so it wouldn't be surprising either. Oh, wait, this is later. So, um, but I think maybe it's the other way that, like Poe could have been, or no, this this comes after. This Poe. comes after. So yeah, then, this is after Poe, and the French love Poe. They, right. So then they could have been probably inspired. It reminds me a little bit of Poe that some of those type of like horror stick kind of images yeah. where like my heart beats is. Um, and it's the fact that it's in, it's in its own line um, just kind of reminds me of that. Are you reading that as my heart beats or my heart beats? Ooh. I like, I want to add in like there's not a whole lot of verbs like that are going on in this poem, mm -hmm. so like like I want to read it as a verb, so like my heart beats. Mm -hmm. But in going with the rest of the poem, um, it could make sense, like my heart beats, like, like as an almost like a noun. Um, like describing the, the portrait um, where It could be read either way. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the form in general. I think uh, a lot about the content. We we already mentioned a little. Well, obviously these questions have come up. Something you know, we, we we've we've mentioned the um, the punctuation, or rather you know, the lack of punctuation, uh, the enjambment, or the lack thereof. The the listiness of this, um, uh, the way he seems to be you know, listing these, uh, you know, listing these these characteristics of himself in this detached way where nothing is quite adding up, looks like maybe at the end, or where he sees himself full length in the mirror. Any other observations on on form here? What you know? Form is doing. It's unique. Um, just, just when you say the word characteristics, and I was just thinking of the like the status of the things that are in the poem. Because some of them, <coughs> most of them, I think, are, are things that we can objectify and we can mm -hmm. imagine just in a kind of painting. So you have the cigarette papers, the day book, the jacket yeah. pouch, um, head, eyes, nose. Cloak, mirror, yeah. subject of eye, head. These are all things that we can can see and sort of recognize. And there are a few that are a little bit more general. So light, um, painting, which can go both ways. Painting can be right. a painting, but also just like the act of painting. Mm -hmm. yes, very good, yeah. mm -hmm. um, literature can do, can do the same kind of work, but usually we use that in, in the general sense. The plane, the portrait is another word like the painting that goes both ways, it can be like a very particular portrait, it also can be the, 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 the genre. Um, so there, there's some kind of, and even, I was also just thinking about the, again, the status of what was happening in the first few lines, because the first, that first line seems to give us things, yeah, papers, daybook, pouch, um, but then we move to life, and there's kind of like, are, are we meant to think that somehow we can we can leap from these things to thinking about life with a, mm -hmm. with a capital L. Mm -hmm. And then we move to just like the speculation, ought to be like painting speculation or, or imperative. So it, it seems like just the form in, in a very kind of tacit kind of way is suggesting that the, the, the way we look and, uh, and perceive, the kind of things we do in, in making portraits and still lives and such, 
we, we, we seem to think that there's something larger that can best in there, and it kind of leads us to, to, to think. So it seems to be just the form is suggesting the kind of movement that happens when we look on and reflect on, on like the subject of or 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 art. No, that's 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 good. I like that the um, the yeah the intrusion of that of of that big picture reflection on life and it it does feel very sudden after that that list and I almost want to read it like he's he's got this still life like he's he's looking at his he's looking at his desk he's like all right cigarette papers they put in tobacco pouch like, all right that's that's an easy pain boom. He's like, what if life was, you know, what if life was that easy? What if it was just this enumeration of options? Like life ought to be like, you know, like this. Um, and so he turns to the mirror and he says, okay, hair was dead, eyes straight, comma from my nose. I read the, the comma as the nose, but I don't know if that's right. A flat nose, a plane on the forehead. There, my portrait. Um, uh, so he, he does. He does the portrait like he would the still life, you know. He says, "He says, what if, you know, what if life was like pain, <laughs> right?" Um, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced of this reading. I'm just kind of floating this out there. Um, but then there's then there's that end where you know suddenly there's a little bit of like life or agency returns, right? The heart beats, the head smokes. Um, he's full length again. Uh, it's tricky. And commas, I guess that's the most unusual of them all, a comma. Yeah. And it's also the thing that's that's lacking, right? Uh, mm. I mean, this, as far as punctuation goes, comma is the one that's really, really <laughs> <unusual>. <laughs> you <would> could use. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he's given it to us. He's given us just in a different one. <laughs> like, you well, want yeah. a comma, like, here's a comma. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is a comma a comma when, when, when you just spell it out? When you spell it out, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Turning that comma, yeah, into the word. I don't know. It's, a, it's strange. Um, but I think the stillness, I mean, it really is. Yeah, I mean, the, com the comma thing is. It, it, it's funny because it's taking it into the, the realm of dictation, where normally people people who dictate would dictate the comma, right? And so it has a, it has a, a, a part in the language, uh, speaking it and identifying a technical way like that. Right. You know, kind of it's, it's as if you were exactly eyes straight, comma, nose yeah. flat, yeah, you know, exactly that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So so it's reminding us that sometimes just again the marks on the page. Yeah. Did they have a life beyond the page, or, or, or I don't know. I don't know. No, that's no, that's that's very good. Yeah, I like this idea of, of dictation. You know, the marks on the page having a life beyond the page, um, and I, I think it, it really takes us. Um, it, it, it that kind of idea. I mean, it, it's, it's what's adding up for me here with this poem is that he really wants to dwell in this middle space between something that's alive dynamic in something that's dead, object. Like he really wants to dwell, he doesn't want to say one or the other, he just wants to see what it's like to be in that middle space. How much can an object be like a person and how much can a person be like an object? 